Hi everyone, I'm Marie. And I'm Laura. We're coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! <laughs> hey everybody, happy Wednesday and thank you so much for being here. I'm Marie, we are here at Living Felt and Felting Tutorials and I'm so excited to bring you Laura Ricks of Emerald Hills Textiles. I'm gonna pop up her little um, her address so that you can follow her online and we have a sneak peek for you today of some of her upcoming classes and just a chance to sit and visit and say hi and get to know more about her so this is an interactive show we're so grateful you're all here I saw a lot of people already checking in and a lot of thumbs up already so thank you so much for giving us a thumb up so hi to a few friends hi to Becky hi to Margo hi out there to Kathy and Teresa hi Judy hi Joan hi Hi, Cindy. And Cindy said, I wonder what she's going to be making in this school. So we're not even keeping it a secret. We have her two classes popped up right here in front of us, and we're going to be talking more about them as uh, the day goes on. And Laura, I'm just so glad to have you back. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to be back. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. Really awesome for me. So Laura and I got to work together last fall, mm -hmm. and, and uh, she filmed two other classes. Some of you have already taken her class, so I I hope that you'll comment over in the chat if you've already taken her other two classes in feldingtutorials.com I'm gonna pop up the school link right there her previous two classes are breakwater beach where you learn how to make amazing waves and clouds and sand and wet sand and all that mm -hmm. and crisp autumn day which is like famous for the clouds yes. <laughs> yeah. right yeah two great classes and and we've seen some really great projects from people that have completed those classes. I've been blown away by how great you all have done. So I, keep I those think pictures it's coming and keep posting <laughs> them. I love seeing what everybody's done. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. This, it's really a testament to Laura's teaching because she really breaks her classes down into really digestible segments. So I wanna tell y'all, please do comment in the chat because we always give away prizes for people who comment in the live chat and then after the live show. So super quick before we jump into a, a bunch of detail, to give away two prizes from last week so last week we needle felted the little fairy bee girl that was great fun and have you seen some of the bees yes <laughs> they're so cute it's such a cute project and yeah. so fun and yeah it was so fun to watch you make it yeah really fun so uh the two two prizes from the post live chat or comment section down below this week go to sherry writing i don't know if it's sherry or sheree writing um, who says that she wanted to make dolls and now she feels like she has a way to make things from her grandkids drawings. Aww, Isn't that that's sweet? so sweet. And then Jane Fortin, uh, who is making uh, these for kids at the medical clinic at in Thompson Falls, Montana, for kids who have had a difficult doctor's visit. Oh, that's, that's so sweet? nice. <laughs> that's so that's sweet. Such a good use for those. Yeah. <laughs> well, we love felting with you all, and I want you to know it's just been my pleasure to sit here and basically watch Laura felt. It's like I get to. See, <laughs> I get all the details. And man, you're going to be teaching some really awesome techniques this time. I'm trying. I'm trying to really like get some good techniques in there for you guys that you really can move forward with and not necessarily even have to be applying it to a picture like this or this, but all kinds of your artwork, you know, any scenes you want to create. Yeah, she's she's developed some tools that I think you're going to find are, are really interesting. So why don't you know we're we're going to introduce you to these pieces and we'll we can talk about them a little bit more uh, maybe in a minute. But this one, Laura, this is called Upward Gaze, mm -hmm. and you shared a rendition of this in our group uh, for those of you who don't know, which is uh, Living Felt Friends on Facebook, and people went nuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was not expecting. I mean. I, I, I liked it, I was happy with it, but I'm, people really connected with this, I think, perspective, and it was something that I feel like a lot of people could relate to. I had a lot of people say, you know, I have pictures laying around my house like this that I wish I knew how to make something like that out of, you know, I have a similar picture. I, yeah. I also like looking up like that, so I think people just connected with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to tell you, watching Laura, watching Laura build this picture, this is um, one where she developed some really awesome, uh, I, I want to say tools, they're helpers, mm -hmm. they're assists that help you uh, tackle a picture like this, and I think you've just made it really 
doable for people mm -hmm. to do? I think so. I think it might be the the most doable of of all my of all my classes maybe like the right. most approachable right, for beginner for beginner for right beginner. right so we, we were talking about that this is probably like if you want to do one of Laura's classes but you feel like you're really a beginner this would be level one mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that's not to say that there aren't you know complicated techniques or techniques that someone who is more advanced will appreciate you know I still am showing you how to get some of those effects on the tree trunks and how to build up your leaves and get the coloring and, and mm -hmm. all of that and blend them. So it's not just for beginners, but I think a beginner Absolutely. could do it. Agreed, yeah. agreed, right, mm -hmm. yeah. And let's see, so Marjolaine says, upward gaze looks amazing, I can feel myself looking up. Mm -hmm. And Janine Frank uh, says, we all lay down on the grass and looked up at trees when we were little. It brought great memory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Now, um, Kathy Yu says, Laura is a super instructor. She says, I've taken the crisp autumn day and Living Felt Supply Pack was very generous. I had enough left over to make another picture. Oh, great. Yeah, great. fun. Or another small picture, something like that. So, uh -huh. yeah, crisp autumn day is really, really fun, too. Um, we've got some first timers. Kathy is new, and I think Becky Williams, this is her first show. Welcome, y'all. Just hi. if you're new, say hi in the chat or say hi where you're coming from. Judy Cabayas says, Lori helped me start thinking in layers rather than tackling a whole picture. Working in segments was really helpful. Great. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love hearing that. I love hearing that. That's so good. Yeah. And so tell us a little bit about this one too, Laura. The, this is one of my favorites. I really love this piece. So this one, I, you know, I just wanted to focus more on people love, you know, people love seeing the trees and they, they want to know how to do the trees and how to do the leaves. So on this one, I wanted to do like a little bit of a different take and do trees from a distance and I wanted to make sure that I included some conifers a little bit of deciduous trees a little bit of limbs and then people have responded well to these reflections so I wanted to yeah. come up with a way you know whenever I design a class or do a class I want to make sure that I can come up with a way that people will be able to be successful with yeah. it and really simplify mm -hmm. it so mm -hmm. So that's what I worked on with this, and I tried to really, I mean, I feel like I, I wanted to fill it full of as many techniques as I could. So we talk about blending the sky, we talk about soft clouds, we talk about reflections, we talk about keeping the distance softer than, than, the, than mm -hmm. the foreground, we talk about all kinds of things in this one. So, so I think you guys are really going to love some of mm -hmm. the things that you learn in this one, I, both of them really, but... But this one's crammed full, I think. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. So we think this is one of the your more involved pieces. Mm -hmm. in, and so I think what's nice is the size is really doable mm -hmm. for people. You, you really make that really tackleable. Mm -hmm. And Laura, you, you both needle felt and wet felt your pieces. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you'll find um, if you've done some of my other classes, this one is maybe a little bit more needle felt focused mm -hmm. than some of my others. We do a lot more needle felting with this one. And I think what's nice about this one is if you are a needle felter that's been thinking you want to try out wet felting, yes. or if you're a wet felter who thinks you want to learn a little bit more and try out needle felting, it's going to be good either way. So because you really get a nice blend of both in this one, I think. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Devin McCarroll, uh, we were talking about you earlier, Devin. We you're Devin. always such, Devin's such a great helper in our, in our community, yes. always answering questions for everybody mm -hmm. and directing them back to videos and resources. And we appreciate you, Devin, very I much. definitely do, yeah. Uh, she says, teaching is a true gift, and Laura definitely has the gift. Thank you, Devin. <laughs> Devin, one of your comments was, like, one of the nicest because Devin commented, I think, that after she created her breakwater beach course, she was like just so happy that she cried. And oh. like that, <laughs> that was just so touching for me. And that's really like what it's all about. Like to, to help somebody understand that, oh. they, that they can. <laughs> that, that they, they can. can. Yeah. That they can. It's not just the teaching, it's also that you can. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So. That's a, I think that's the making of a great teacher is mm -hmm. believing that the students can. And you can, and, yes. And then the teacher has to be willing to find a way to convey what they figured out, stumbled upon, or like, so let's talk about that. So now, um, 
some people are trained artists, but what about you? Like, what about when you were young? Tell us about create, you know, how was your creativity when you were a young person? And maybe what did you do for art when you were mm -hmm. young? So I drew all the time when I was young. I drew a lot. My mom drew and my mom had like done paintings and she had little drawings from when she was in high school. And my sisters drew and my oldest sister drew a lot. And then, um, my middle sister was really creative in like decorative ways and fashion ways and stuff. She'd always be stressing me up in clothes, but Aww. I would, you know, I kind of drew creative inspiration from all of them. And I did a lot of drawing as a kid and I kind of just drew what was on hand. So if I, if there was like a picture in a book or something that I was reading, I was always kind of trying to just recreate it and draw and shade and learn all of those techniques. And I did that all through like up through my teenage years, really, I mm -hmm. did a lot of drawing, but I didn't take a lot of art classes in school. So right. I, you know, I, I was a very academic in school, but you were. Mm -hmm. so I didn't have a lot of like the, the actual classes to go with it. I just enjoyed doing it. So I did. And so when did you decide your direction? Like what, you know, how old were you when you kind of decided so I what was, direction you were going to go? Yeah, it was like my senior year, okay. I mean, I, which I think is, you know, pretty common for most people you get to that right. point where everybody in the world is asking you so what are you going to do after high school what are you mm -hmm. going to do what are you going to study and you know I remember drawing one night and I had like this turning point where I just I was drawing this picture I had this image that like a photographer had done I think her name was Kim Anderson and I was kind of copying this this image and I was drawing it and I just felt frustrated and I don't, I, I felt like, you know, this is a good drawing, but I felt like I didn't have enough creative power behind it. I mm. felt like I was copying or not like thinking of something on my own. I don't know what I thought I should have been able to do. Yeah, we have that, that picture, point, you know, right? Yes, we have I'm that pull picture. It up here. I'm going to so, pull up a, a, a smaller version of it. So. so there's like my little drawing on the right and I was on the right hand and I just stopped. I was just like, and that's kind of when I decided I was just, I was going to go to school. I was going to study science and I just kind of put it away for a while. And after that I did art just kind of more in crafty ways. Yeah. So okay. there's me graduating high school and I'm off to go study biology <laughs> and, and get a job as a med tech, which served me really well for a long time. Um, and I just left that job last yes, week. Yes, you did. I Congratulations. Did. After like 18 years in the lab, I finally fully stepped out of it. And, and I'm an artist now. That's time. so exciting. So, yeah. So that's mm -hmm. when I decided. And I wish I could go shake that girl a little bit. Like, like you're crazy. Like, you can do so much with being able to, to copy. Or you just haven't built your creative skills enough yet. Or you haven't learned how to use your creative skills enough yet. So... I'm not saying that my line of thinking was correct when I stopped <laughs> when I stopped doing it, but that's what I decided to do. Yeah. So and so, when did you actually discover felting? Tell us a little bit about so, that. Felting I discovered in 2014. So you know, as I was working full time in the lab, you know, the only creative outlet I really had was just crafty things, and I w I always get very crafty around Christmas. I, oh, always, man, I get it. <laughs> I always have a million ideas of things to do around Christmas. And I was looking through a magazine and I saw these little bird ornaments that were just so cute. Um, but they were, they were out of my price range for sure. So I don't want to say they were too expensive. They were probably, and I discovered that I'm sure they were probably worth what the price was once I started trying to do it myself. But I, I thought I'm going to try to do it myself and right. I read the description and said they were needle felted mm -hmm. and I didn't know what that was so I sure. just started researching on YouTube and finding tutorials like Marie does and and I, I don't think I found a Marie tutorial to begin with because I probably would have done a better job <laughs> <laughs> if I had and I probably would have been using better wool but I just found like wool at a craft store sure. and Mm -hmm. made a little bird and a little snowman, I think. No, we have a picture. Yeah. These are your first felts, My right? My first felts. Right, okay, first so felts. I'm going to pull these up here. Look how cute they are. Yeah. There's my little bird. That little bird is like, my husband pulled a little table into the living room for me. Aww. And I think I was watching Christmas movies and I just spent the day 
making things. So That's so sweet. And you yeah. still have them, right? I still have them. I pull them out every year for Christmas, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so where did your felting, what happened after that? So I kind of just tucked it away. I tried some little needle felted figures. I got frustrated. I think I probably just didn't know enough about it to do it really effectively and um, expeditiously or, like, uh, right. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was, I was definitely going about it the wrong way. So I got frustrated with it pretty quick, but I had all this wool left over. And I think I was using like Merino top for some of my things. I did like a huge needle felted tree all out of Merino top. And it just you get took, what you get. It right? just took forever. And I didn't know the difference between the fibers Neither and I was I. using this tiny, like fine needle. And so mm -hmm. I had all this wool left over and the girl so the next year so that was 2014 when I did the ornaments mm -hmm. and then in like 2015 we were trying to think of something for a couple of the kids to do for their 4-H projects uh -huh. and I had mm -hmm. this wool and when I would research the needle felting I would see things about wet felting and we checked that out and we decided that they would try that for their 4-H projects. Yes, yeah. and we, so. we have pictures of that too. That's really fun. Here, look how sweet. Yeah, yeah. so there's Lizzie. Lizzie made like a little uh, like a little leopard or something sitting in Africa and did like a little sunset and then Claire's pictures on the bottom. And I think she kind of copied off of something that she saw on the internet, but I don't know the name of the artist that she she was looking at but she did just some simple little flowers and poppies they're and, really great yeah, though yeah and we just found you know some videos whatever videos we could find sure. and, and mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. tried it and I thought wow this is fun and you know maybe if I had time I could do a little more with that but I, I didn't have time at the time I was still full-time in the lab so I didn't really have a lot of time so that was like a year after you discovered felting mm -hmm. y'all tried those those pictures so mm -hmm. what tell us a little bit about your progression after that okay so after that I would say I got really um really kind of frustrated with my job like I was feeling uncomfortable in my job I guess I would say I was feeling like I really needed a creative outlet and um just a little bit stuck and like maybe I wasn't I feel like it's almost like what people must talk about when they say they have a calling like you just feel like you should be doing something else and mm -hmm. I just felt mm -hmm. that at that time in my life and so I actually had like another little another little turning point before I got back to art so that drawing oh right that I had started mm -hmm. when I was 17 oh, put it up Big. yeah mm -hmm. I happened to stumble upon that when I was going through some things and I thought what did I do like I mean if I could do that at like 17 with no art classes really or no guidance you know what what have I done? What am I doing with my life? And and I was at like a really, I had, you know, I'd, I'd gone through life. I'd, I'd graduated college. I'd gotten married. I'd gotten divorced. I'd been a single mom. I'd gotten remarried, you know. Yes. And, and, and for the first time in my life, I was in this sort of position where I was in like a relationship where it wasn't about what somebody else needed from me. And I, like for once, I didn't have to be what somebody else needed me to be. And I was actually starting to think, what do I want to be? And so I saw that and I felt like, you know, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to go back to art. I want to try to be an artist. And I didn't know if I could or not, but I just felt like that's what I was going to do when mm -hmm. I saw that picture again. So I started looking for ways to do that. And in my area, there's a little art fair called Art on the Wabash. And I applied to that, or I decided I wanted to apply to that, and mm -hmm. I looked it up, and they said you needed, like, eight photos to submit. Mm -hmm. Eight. So, you needed eight, <laughs> and I didn't have any. I didn't have any, and I didn't know what I was even going to make, but I knew that I loved, like, fabric and textiles, and I, I remembered the felt, and I did some felt pieces, and I just decided on felting. I was kind of, you know, somebody, an artist in the area looked at some of the things that I had made and said, well, maybe you should go in this direction, in this, like, these are kind of cool, and I haven't seen that, um, so I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to apply so with. So we have, so we have these first four pieces that the you, first yeah, four that you 2D submitted. felted pieces that I, that I did to 
apply to this show and and I made like four four pictures and four vessels I think that's what I submitted to about how big are these pieces Laura that we're looking at just approximately um I would say they're all the mushroom is maybe like an eight by ten and all of the rest of them are probably at least 11 by 14 maybe some of them are 16 by 20. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the little farm scene is like a 16 by 20. I love how bold the colors are like you were not afraid of color. I I like really went for it with the colors to begin with for yeah. sure and that was one of the things that I mm -hmm. loved about looking at the wool. I loved like just looking at all the colors so I made my first pieces especially just really over the top colorful. And so you applied to the show? And I got accepted. So I had from May to September to then fill a booth. Mm -hmm. And we actually bought a booth and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm in it. Like I'm doing this <laughs> because we, we bought a booth and everything. I got my stuff framed up and I went and, and I set up and I talked to people all day just about how I had done it. And I had such a great time connecting with it was the first day that I really felt like a real sense of community like wow. I was talking to like people that live around me and in my town right and it felt like I was a part of something a part of a community and at the end of the day like they had people vote for like their favorite little booth like on their way out they could mm -hmm. submit and I got the people's choice oh. award and it was just the best feeling so that's me and my yeah. family that day <laughs> isn't I this got a great, my a great little picture people's choice award so that was 2017 very exciting yeah. and lovely to see your family there and support yes, of yes. You. and my so. husband has been my biggest fan he's He's been so supportive through all of it. And they all have. I felt very supported by them that day, for sure. It's so lovely. And I'm so glad to get to meet Dan this trip. You coming mm -hmm. back. So, yeah. so nice. Nice. And now, Laura, you sell your work. Um, you sell your work. So tell us a little bit about I'm just going to pull up a picture here real quick of um, the gallery where yeah. you, you have your stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's Artist's Own, and mm -hmm. that's in Lafayette, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And that's an artist co-op. It's we're, we're a cooperative, so, you know, co-owners, we all work together to run, to run that store. And I go to a lot of art galleries when I visit other towns. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I loved that store before I ever even thought about being an artist like mm -hmm. before I even had that thought in my head so to be a part of that for me and, and being from my area like that's pretty special to me I'm really happy to be a part of that and they do have an online shop I have a few things on their online shop and and it's nice to have a place for people to come and look at my work alongside the work of some other really talented artists yeah that's mm -hmm. that's cool now do you work in the gallery some or how does I that do. work yeah we all share the 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 shop responsibilities nice. so we all have our days in the shop and anytime you go in there you know one of the artists is going to be working so so yeah i spend like usually a couple of days a few days a month down mm -hmm. there working mm -hmm. so nice. and i'm part of the display committee too so that i have so much fun with that like deciding how to display things and seeing all the new stuff that people have brought in is really fun. Yeah. It looks like a great place to go if you're in town. So it's in Indianapolis. Lafayette. Oh, sorry. Lafayette. It's in Lafayette. It's, it's in Lafayette. Lafayette. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Artists yeah. own. So if and you said by, they have yeah. different stuff online than they do in the store. Right. 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 So it's a separate shop. Mm -hmm. The online shop, just because you don't see it there, it may be in the store. Yeah. Just because you don't see it in the store, it may be online. So, so yeah, if you're going yeah. through, definitely, yeah. definitely check it out. Mm -hmm. And um, well, just lots and lots of love here, Laura, for your pieces, uh, loving your story. Um, really, people just really, really enjoying it. Um, congratulating you on following your intuition. And lucky us, because you're teaching now yeah, <laughs> and sharing It's working with out. Us. It's working out, for sure. Now, you brought a couple of pieces. I, I think it'd be fun just to show a, a couple of other pieces that are maybe some uh, some favorites for you. Can mm -hmm. we, we pull these up? Why don't we do, let's do, um, let's do this one first. And tell us a, tell us a little bit about this piece here. So that one's the uh, Yellowstone River Gorge, and I had taken that picture on a vacation years ago. And when I started felting, I really I wanted to 
create that scene. But it took me so long to feel confident enough to approach it or know even where I wanted to start with it. And so for that one, I was just really happy that I had finally reached a point where I was I was able to look at that photo and figure out how to do it in wool. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah. you know, one of those like, okay, I finally know how to do this. And I was, I was just happy the, the way it turned out. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful piece, really mm -hmm. beautiful piece. And it's fun to have those. Those are like little pivotal, pivotal moments in your own art, right? Like, yeah. Just, yeah. And then that. if you have a piece that you, that you want to do a picture an inspiration photo that you want to do, you know, just because you can't do it yet, keep, you know, hold right. on to it, <laughs> yeah. keep building your skills and That's eventually, yeah, eventually you might look at that picture and say, I think I know how to do that now. I think I, think I, I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can learn so, lots of techniques uh, as you go along. Let's, let's look at this one. Um, this is a really great piece. What's this entitled? So that one's called Woodland Welcome. Mm. And that one is inspired by a picture I took in Asheville and it's got all this textured novelty yarn in it. I had taken that photo while we were out for a hike in Asheville. We were on vacation. And the very next day we went downtown and we were shopping at like a little yarn store. And as soon as I saw that yarn, I thought of that picture that I had just taken. Wow. Like it just reminded me of like the leaves and the the underbrush and even like tree bark and so I took it home and I wasn't really sure what to do with it again like I was like I know that I've connected these two things but I don't know how to do it yet so it was probably about a year before I sat down and really yeah. played with using that yarn yeah. and, and incorporating it into the wool. That was yeah. another piece that was really inspirational in the group, and, and mm -hmm. we talked about doing a, a class with it, but it's like, well, you have the yarn once, we were saying, like, yeah. you have the yarn once, and then you don't. The way that the novelty yarn works, I, I'm sure it's discontinued, and yeah. I mm -hmm. I can't find, like, a place to buy it I know in, in huge mass. quantities yeah. to where I could be like, just go to Amazon and click, you know, it's not like yeah. that with with the yarn so some of my best novelty yarns have been on the clearance rack and like a fancy yarn shop and they're like oh this peddlers you know this yeah. like little yeah. peasant, peasant novelty yarn yeah. i'm like oh that's the bomb yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so so yeah i wish i wish i had enough of it to do a class but yeah mm -hmm. but i think there's still something to be learned from it to just you know, keep your eye, like that just has wool in it. So I thought, mm -hmm. I think I can felt it in there. Yeah. So keep your eye out for things that remind you of other things or textures that you see, you know, try to connect those thoughts when you can. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So D Diane asked, do you only work from photos you've taken yourself? I try to, mm -hmm. I try to, because I feel like, you know, I'm always so worried about stealing someone else's photo or if, a friend, you know, sometimes friends are like, actually, Breakwater Beach, my, my good friend Debbie, my good friends Debbie and Connie had gone to um, Lake Michigan, and they had taken that photo, and mm -hmm. she was like, hey, I took this picture, do you want to, do you think you could use it for your art? And I'm like, yeah, I think I could. <laughs> <laughs> and I really have yeah. used it for my art, for sure. And we all have, so thanks to them for giving me that picture, but... Um, the only time I really use like other people's photos or photos from the internet, sometimes if I'm doing like a bug or a bird or something that I need to reference what that animal or that bug looks like, but I try not to, I try not to just copy someone else's Sure, sure, picture. sure. Yeah, so there are some so. pictures you can use uh, with, like there's no copyright online, but you should find those. Yeah, like Pexels, you can often get, um, commercial free license like you can use them for anything mm -hmm. you know so yeah. get images there but okay so um trisha slater asked whether you needle felt onto a colored felt base um it just depends i would mm -hmm. say yeah mm -hmm. it just depends on the project so i work a lot on like pre-felts but mm -hmm. yeah but so usually a neutral or white colored usually yeah. yeah unless it's you know unless i 
Yeah, unless yeah. I want that background color maybe to come through, or yeah. I'm doing she, something. She's building like up it. all the colored layers. Mm -hmm. She's building up all the colored layers, and she shows you how to do that, which is mm -hmm. just which is just awesome. So, um, if y'all if y'all missed it, here is you can follow Laura online at Emerald Hill. Hills Textiles, and you can take her classes at feltingtutorials.com. So as of right now, uh, this filming, we're in late July. Yeah, mm -hmm. late July 2021. These two classes are online, Chris Bottom Day and Breakwater Beach, both awesome classes, great skills builders, great techniques you can learn. You can, uh, we've, we've been trying to update these little slideshows so you can see what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. There's a class chat, which you've been really great about, communicating you with try. your students. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's not like a Facebook group that's active every minute of the day, like mm -hmm. ours, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is very, very busy. But these two classes are due to launch uh, in fall 2021, so look for them more like um, September, I'm going to say. It might be late September. It depends. We, we just shared uh, another class that's launching. So, um, But that's, that's our goal. And so you want to make sure that you join our email lists. You can do those in two places. You can join us on Living Felt, which is where we have all of our supplies. Uh, you can join the school and take some free classes. I've seen some people mention some classes already, like the Wet Felting um, Fundamentals class. Uh, somebody chimed in about that earlier. So you can take free classes classes and just see whether the online learning is for you. There's no mm -hmm. chat groups in the free classes, but you can see whether the format works right. before you decide to invest in a class. And all the classes, almost all the classes have a kit, but they all have a supply list if you want to go a la carte or, you know, pull from your own stash. And you can yeah. tell that Marie has put like a lot of time and thought and, <gasps> and energy into organizing the class as well. And I think they're, it's really intuitive how to how to move through the school I think you did like a really great job with that so wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all a team effort here yeah. thank you uh -huh. <laughs> lots of lots of support here in in uh, woolly wonderland that's for <laughs> sure and uh, just a great team here helping us bring the school to life I mean it's just like one year old you know it's yeah. not even a year yeah. old yet so we're excited they've done they've done really well like I think you'll like it especially like yeah. take one of those Free classes, yeah. and and then you, it's not like a risk of losing. Money. No, yeah. you, no, you don't you don't risk anything. Mm -hmm. So so here we have upward gaze and red bud reflections. Yes, two great classes coming out fall twenty twenty one, and um, I've got to get this girl back to work. We got to get back to filming. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for hanging out. But I tell you what, we're going to give away a few prizes. So I know that Fairy Ann's going to come in here in just a moment. I we're getting lots of. Uh, Lots of feedback here. People saying they're looking forward to your class. Uh, Melinda Kerner wants to sign up now. We'll <laughs> we'll usually let you know when there is uh, there's an opportunity to sign up. Usually there's some kind of early bird special. Um, oh, Vicky asked, would one of these classes be easier than the other? Yeah, um, yeah. I think that definitely the upward gaze is probably going to be more of a beginner level than the other one, so then then red bud reflections. So red bud reflections is probably more like intermediate or beyond, and then this upward gaze, I would say, is, you know, if you have just a little understanding about, about wool, then you're probably gonna be able to approach this class. I break it down pretty, pretty well for you. I think you'll be able to follow it. Yeah, and we have some we have some prizes to give away, right? So I'm hoping that uh, our our fairy our fairy prize giver will magically appear <laughs> in just a moment with our magic hat. Um, so Debbie, uh, will the classes be online? Yes, they are online. Here's our school, feltingtutorials.com. Same address, right up there over Laura's head, sort of. Um, and they are self-paced. You can, as soon as you take a class, as soon as you sign up for a class in the school, once the class goes uh, launches, you are in the class. You can access the videos anytime you want and for as long as you want. So once you're enrolled, you're enrolled. As long as you are a student of the school, then you're going to have access to that class. Mm -hmm. And we brought some things to give away. Yes. Uh, do you want to show what you're giving away first? Yes, I've, I've added on to the giveaway for today. So for today's viewers, I have these little 
grateful to the moon and back because I'm so grateful to the moon and back for all of you and Marie so these are actually like little magnets that you, that you can save so this is a magnet on a little greeting card They're so adorable. two of those to send out and then for um, next week when you pull oh don't show yet oh don't show okay no, no, next Marie week. will we'll show, show you next, next week. week yeah we're okay. getting, we have two more prizes to give away next week though so you're gonna want to comment yeah. after the live show down below. If we don't draw your name right now, don't worry because we're gonna draw two more prizes. And we're also, for a part of the giveaway, we're also giving away gift certificates that you can put towards a class in the online school. Yeah, yeah. So Laura's gonna draw a name and so am I. Okay. And thank you all so much for hanging out with us right now and just helping our day. All right? Okay, I have got Susan Koutnik. And I have Marina Welch. Congratulations, gals, and thank you, everyone. We're gonna be sending you gals prizes, so if you're not in our database, please go to our website uh, and use the contact us form on the bottom. If you make anything with our stuff, make sure to tag us on Living Felt, and hey, follow Laura. You're gonna be so happy you did. We're going to see you in our group and join us in the school. And until next time, remember to leave your comment down below for a chance to win next week. Thank you, Laura, for being here. Thank you for having me so much. Thanks, everyone. Good to hang out with everyone.